My name is Hannah, and this is my beauty budget. Hey y'all, so it is time for my check-in, and I am, as we say in my household, a little bit sicky. I'm feeling a little bit sicky. I don't think I'm going to get a full-blown illness, but I'm a tiny bit not at my peak today. So I didn't really put on any eye makeup. This is what I look like kind of like on a daily basis if I go for a bare eye. I am wearing glitter eyeliner. Actually, I'll zoom in in a minute so you can see it because it's the kind of look that at close range is actually quite effective. But I know that on camera and at this distance, I'm just going to look like a weeny little wormy that just woke up and put on some red lipstick, which by the way is mandolin... Mandor Mando, is this whole video gonna be like this? I need to check myself before I wreck myself. Givenchy Mandarin Bolero, which many of you requested that I wear on camera after I talked about how much I love this color. It made it through my last reckoning, and this is what it looks like. And you can really, really see the effect with this look because it's pretty much the star of the show. I'm also wearing a blush. Let me just zoom in really quick so you can see the eyes because it's, it's kind of cool, and I'm glad that I know about this glitter liner with nothing else except mascara on the top lashes business because in a pinch it's just the thing. I feel like with this look you can see how hooded my eyes really are. You can really see how much of a deception I usually engage in when I deepen my crease and deepen the area above my crease with a shadow. And you can also kind of see my age. I feel like it simultaneously makes me look younger, but also when you really look right at my eyes you can kind of see my age. I know it's weird that I'm starting out this video like analyzing this weird different makeup look for me, but it's just, I don't know, it's interesting to me. I take an interest in it, and you are the only people in my life who care. So you're the, this is the kind of thing I would be like discussing with Joe, and he would be like, you know who you should tell that to, and who would really care more than I do? <laughs> Your subscribers. Okay, I've already fumbled my words and used bad grammar. What more could go wrong? This is my monthly check-in. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. So in the way that I am a little bit more of a mess than usual and a little bit sicky, my check-in is a little bit more of a mess than usual. I have my usual notes jotted down, but I feel like they're a little bit out of order and I'm just gonna kind of bust through them. I think in some ways these videos go off the best when I like don't try to have a vice grip on the way that they unfold, so hopefully that strategy will work well. The first thing that I have on my list, and by the way, I don't know if I need to preface like this, but you know, this is my budget year, I'm on a budget, and the check-in is just kind of me taking a step back and checking in about the way in which this project and being on a budget has affected my life and the way that that project is evolving. And it's also, also usually an occasion for me to check in a little bit about being on YouTube and how this project, this project is affecting my life and how it is evolving and how the two things are like affecting each other and evolving together and stuff like that. So the first note is that buying just one thing has continued to be great. And I haven't yet filmed my video about the things that I purchased with my budget in October, but that is coming very soon. I'm actually going away this weekend and I might try not to push, I'm filming this on a Thursday, It'll probably be my Saturday or my Sunday video, depending on how much else I've got going on, how many other videos I end up with, like edited, pre-edited for the weekend because I'm going away with some friends. And I was thinking I would like bust through this afternoon and film a bunch and film that video about what I bought in October and film a bunch of other things. Because I'm feeling a little sniffly, I might kind of just film this one and have that be it, which would mean this is all just to say that if I don't film a bunch today, if I rest instead, then the video about what I purchased in October will be up kind of mid to late next week instead of at the beginning of next week. But it is coming very soon in any case. What I mean in invoking that impending video to discuss the just one thing thing <laughs> What I mean is that you will discover when I report about what I purchased in October that I didn't buy just one thing, but my intention was to buy just one thing. So I only shopped around for one thing. I chose one thing. It cost almost my whole budget. 
I bought that one thing and then I stopped shopping. And I ended up replacing a couple of tiny items here and there with the remainder of my budget. So there are a number of things on the little list of things that I bought in October. But to me, as a shopper, as a lover of beautiful things, as someone who has historically compulsively not just purchased beautiful things, but shopped for them, meaning that I have historically engaged consistently in obsessive shopping behavior, always seeking something to want, always deciding what would be my next purchase. And every time I bought something, the excitement would quickly fade and I would immediately go back to the behavior of shopping and shopping and shopping around for the next big thing. That's how I used to behave. And both in October and September, the month before it, I bought one big thing and then I stopped engaging in those behaviors for all of the rest of the month. So that's what I've been doing now for three months actually because the plan for the September purchase started the month before because I was saving up. So it's been a, a quarter of the year now that I have been doing this shopping for just one big thing and then essentially feeling like I'm on a no-buy, kind of on like a replacements only no-buy with my budget almost all of the time. I just wanted to report that I'm loving that and I don't really have anything this coming month that I want to buy. I do have it in my mind that I might just want to buck up my winter wardrobe a little bit. Not with sweaters, I feel like I have possibly still too many sweaters even after recently decluttering my wardrobe. Speaking of which, Joe recently decluttered his wardrobe and he was getting rid of this sweater. I don't know how, you'll be able to see it, right? You can see the window pane. Yeah, you can see it. The monitor is like all blown out for me right now, but you can see it's like this window pane. It's a, it's a men's sweater. It's from Brooks Brothers. However, I purchased it for him, not at Brooks Brothers, but at the Salvation Army in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where we used to live. It was very obviously the unworn cast off of someone wealthier than we. But, you know, it's like a beautiful men's sweater. And then Joe just never really wore it. And he decided that he didn't need to keep it anymore. And I was like, I'll take it. And today is kind of the first even like remotely fall-ish or fall smelling day in LA. So I'm like cozying up and Joe's cast off sweater and I'm really living my best even though I feel a little sniffly. It's actually like the perfect thing to be wearing on a day where I feel a little sniffly but I also need to be working. This is such a tangent. What I'm trying to say is that I don't feel like I need like statement sweaters. Like I don't need to take my budget this month and invest it in like an amazing chunky mustard sweater from Aritzia although that does sound really great. But I feel like I have things that fill that sort of I was about to say hole, but it just, when I, when I was going to say fill that hole, I felt like it was going to sound sort of smarmy. I have a number of sweaters that fit that role that haven't even really come out to play yet this winter because it just hasn't gotten cold enough yet. So I don't think that that's what I'll do, but I do feel like maybe the in-between weight, like long sleeve, thin, sheer merino wool sweaters, that kind of thing, that might be where I put my budget this month, but it remains to be seen. I just have really loved the feeling of having bought one thing that I love and then just like cooling off from shopping for weeks and weeks at a time. It's partly financial, it's partly the fact that I feel my spending come to a complete halt and I kind of get back in touch with that mode where my money stays in my pocket and stays in my bank account and I just like ride that mode for weeks and weeks. I really appreciate that because you know, my no-buy year wasn't that long ago, it was just last year. And my very bad habits weren't that long ago, it was just the year before that. So I, I feel like even though I'm, I'm now shopping in a very controlled way for beautiful things and for things that excite me and for the very things that caused my overspending before, even though I'm now doing that, every day, every month, every week, every portion of a month that I can spend just kind of keeping a lid on it and like staying in touch with that no buy feeling is healthy for me. So that's just been great. And in terms of like budgeting news and you know, the news from the world of my life as someone who budgets for beauty, that is the headline that that sort of fewer nicer things taken to the extreme of one nice thing a month is awesome for me. Still, still doing it. 
it's still working and I'm here for it. However, I did want to touch briefly in this video on the effect of PR on all of those systems for me. And the next note on my list says that I need to, I still need to do my channel changes video. It is coming soon. One of the main things I need to address is the fact that I decided to stop receiving subscriber gifts. So that's going to come in the channel changes video. And I'm also going to give you guys a little bit of an update on how I'm feeling about the role of PR in my life and the role of PR in my budget. And that is just because the amount of PR that I'm receiving has increased significantly in the second half of the year. So I made that video about PR about halfway through the year. It might have been less than halfway through the year. And I had only really been receiving PR since like February. So everything that I said in that video still holds true and I don't regret making it at that time. I feel like it was a really cool opportunity to talk through a bunch of like the logic and the way in which the logic can sometimes be flawed when people feel upset about PR and just to sort of share my thoughts at that time and share my experience with you. And a lot of what I said in that video wasn't just very true then and isn't just still relevant, but it is also still relevant now. For example, my budget is still incredibly significant to me in terms of the way that it helps me control my relationship with my finances. And if I were not budgeting, no matter how much PR I ever got, I would still have a really hard time not overspending because I still want so many beautiful things all the time. There are always lists miles long of things that I want to be buying. And I still go through periods of just like breaking out into a cold sweat with desire over things that I can't afford. And the thing that keeps me from causing those little like panic moments of desire, the thing that keeps me from allowing them to cause me to spend hundreds of dollars on beautiful things is my budget. So I'm still battling my demons of wanting to overspend. I still want to pile $500 worth of clothing in my Aritzia cart and hit checkout and feel those chemicals flood my body and get the package in the mail and open it and put on all of the gorgeous clothes that I picked out. I still want to do that. And I'm still working really, really hard and my budget is still being mobilized really intensely in my life to keep me from ever doing that. Like it never ends. I never get to be like, I did it, I made it, it's over. That difficult phase where I budgeted is over and now I get to go back to spending those $500 again. Like that's never gonna happen unless I, my economic status changes significantly and I'm able to increase my budget. But I think that that, that is what will happen if I ever get to the point. I mean, at this point, I'm like in my mid thirties, like this is my life. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but if I, if that were to happen, I wouldn't then just go off the rails. What I would do is increase my budget. That's really important. I feel because the thing that matters is that I'm making a choice in advance about what I can afford and I'm sticking to that. So in terms of my own relationship with my troubled history as an overspender, in terms of my own relationship with my finances and my relationship with my shopping behaviors and just that this entire kind of healing process that I kicked off with my no buy year, my budget holds a lot of water and I, I can't overstate that enough. It's, it is still literally my saving grace. But as the amount of PR that I am receiving has increased compared to what it was when I made that video, my relationship with stuff has become more and more unusual. It, it was already unusual compared to someone who's not on social media when I made that video, but it's just become more unusual. And it's partly because I've been receiving more offers from companies whose products I really do want to try out. I still reject or don't respond to like 90% of the offers that come into my inbox, but I've just been noticing more and more offers that I think are great and that I'm really curious to take advantage of and really excited to be able to review the products on my channel. So there's been just an increase in like quality offers of product in exchange for a review. And I love that for my channel. Like I love being able to introduce you guys, especially to small brands. Like, oh, this is the perfect example. This is the perfect example. I wasn't planning to talk about this in this video, but I'm so excited about it. So I got the opportunity to receive PR from this little jewelry, jewelry 
brand called the called Serpent and the Swan. I think it's not the Serpent, it's just Serpent and the Swan. And so I looked at the website and I saw this little gold snake ear climber. I'll put it in and I'll give you a close up. So I'll tell you about while I'm putting it in. But it is so gorgeous. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I would love to receive that in PR. So I accepted it and I received the package. And in the process, I started communicating with the woman who owns the shop. And I realized that it's a tiny, tiny one woman handmade jewelry business out of Australia. It's like Poema, my clothing business, which is a very, very small you know, it's not just me, it's also Joe, but it is literally just the two of us running a business where we sell pieces that I make with my own two hands. Like we don't have anything mass produced. We don't have anyone working for us. I literally sew everything and they're all my own designs. And that's what's going on with Serpent and the Swan. It's, it's one woman who makes these beautiful things. These are my other two piercings. That's not part of the ear climber. Those are just rings that are in my cartilage piercings. And then I've got, I actually have four holes in my hair, in my ear right here. I think I just put it into the second one. So if I had in another earring, it would be right there. And then the little snakey crawling up. How cute is he? Anyway, when I found out that it's just this one incredibly talented, hardworking woman in her studio in Australia making jewelry and selling it on her website, I was... 5,000 times more excited to get it in PR and to talk about it on my channel and to put a picture of it up on my Instagram page, which I got a great picture of it, so I'll put that up on the screen right now. 10,000 times more excited because it's not just about tipping you guys off for a, a really amazing small business or a really amazing piece of jewelry that you might be interested in, letting you know that the quality is there and that the delivery went off without a hitch and that the communication was excellent and just like reviewing the experience, which I am happy to be able to do, like everything about it is flawless and I'm happy to be able to report that to you. But it's not just about that, it's also about having the opportunity to raise awareness about what an incredible diversity of choice we have when we do spend money on a beautiful thing in terms of where that money goes. And this is something I started talking about with my um, ethic, corporate ethics video, and I will get back to that eventually. That's another thing that I'm going to cover in my um, upcoming channel changes video. You can buy a piece of jewelry, cool, edgy, made out of good materials, like going to last a long time, makes you feel good because it's beautiful. You can find stuff like that from sources whereby when you buy them, you're giving your money to huge corporations that they're just less personal and you don't know a lot of the times like what they have stakes in. You don't know where their money is going, what, what kind of world their money is supporting. You don't know how they treat their employees. You don't know where they source the materials. You know what I mean? Like you don't know any of that stuff. And I've, I learned firsthand how hard it is to uncover any of that information. But if you can find something that you love just as much and buy it from one woman, the woman who made it with her hands, the difference that that makes is it's just like so much bigger than I, than I think it, you can imagine if you've not been on the other side of it, which I have been. Like I'm, I am on the other side of it. My main job is that. I make stuff with my hands and sell it. And the difference that it makes to me when my customers choose to buy a skirt from me instead of buying a skirt from Urban Outfitters or a skirt from Walmart or a skirt from Aritzia, like the, the difference that it makes to me is my, my life. Like it is my entire life. It's my world. And so I just, I'm excited that as my channel grows, I'm getting the chance to connect not only to brands like Urban Decay, who's like sent me some you know, lipstick the other day. Like, I mean, I don't know like, what I did deserve that, but it's cool. Like it's cool to be on their radar, but that that's fine. Right. But it's not, it's not that that's like making me wet my panties over here. It's the fact that my channel is getting to the point where I am able to connect to brands like Serpent and the Swan. And by talking about them, by talking about their work, I'm reminding you guys that there's this option that you can vote with your dollar in in a way where you're like voting for small business 
And I just believe really strongly in that. I've really gone off on a tangent here. Holy cannoli, what was I even talking about? I was talking about PR. I can't remember why I even decided to get off on that tangent about small business. I think, oh, I think I just remembered that I, it's something that I've been meaning to say in passing when I was just talking about the fact that I'm starting to connect with more brands because it's cool. I wasn't expecting it. Like if, if a year ago you had been like, Hannah, like if your channel grows and you keep making more videos, you'll connect to more brands and you might have opportunities to review different things. Like if you had said that to me, I wouldn't have thought of things like this, like really, really amazing things like this. And I wouldn't have thought of brands like Serpent and, and the Swan, like small, independent, amazing, talented brand, like talented people running small brands. Like I wouldn't have thought that that was what you were talking about. I would have thought you were talking about something like Urban Decay sending me a lipstick. So it's just kind of surprised me and excited me and I wanted to share that with you. And I wanted to share that I feel like it's not just about using my platform for reviewing things, but using my platform for talking about like the ways that we spend our budget if we're spending it on beautiful things. All right, I'm gonna move on from that because what I meant to say, the note that I have here is just to say that since that is happening and I'm starting to connect to brands large and small and to receive more things, there is a new kind of relationship between me and stuff and like stuff coming into my life in a way that is pretty dramatic compared to the number of things I'm buying. So I'm budgeting for beauty, I'm focused on fewer nicer things, and so I'm buying like one beautiful thing a month plus replacements, that's very, very little. But then the number of things that are coming into my life, the amount of stuff that's kind of coming through my life because of my YouTube channel is high. It's not at, I think it maybe isn't, well, I can't say that. I was about to say it might not be as high as it was back when I was a big overspender, but I don't think that's true. I actually think that more stuff is coming through my life now than it did even back when I was at my worst in terms of spending which is kind of mind blowing. It's a, it's a bit of like a logical knot for me that I'm starting to try to untie and smooth out and like decide what I'm gonna do about it. A lot of those things aren't staying in my life. And so far that's kind of been my saving grace. Like a, a, a pretty significant stream of things is coming through my life and I'm reviewing them and deciding whether or not to keep them. But a lot of those things are entering and exiting. There's like, just sort of like a little, uh, a little conveyor belt. They like come in and then they go out and they go out to good homes. So I really enjoy that. I'm not against it. But it is kind of trippy to be budgeting so carefully and spending so, it, so in such a restrained way on just the one thing that I want the most and to, and to feel the power of that and to feel how gratified that makes me. And then to be accepting all of this stuff for review and just dealing with new things all the time. Many of which I don't feel as excited about as I feel about this ear climber. Like a lot of things are coming into my life and I'm like, oh, cool. Okay, cool. You know, but it's not the same as the way that I feel about the one beautiful thing that I'm buying every month. But it is still like packages in the mail. It is still like, the excitement of the new, it is still a sense of abundance and a sense of, of, of color and shape and sort of explosions and openings of boxes and all of those things that I used to spend money, too, too much money to keep consistently entering my life, just in the past couple months have started really consistently entering my life, though I am no longer spending money to cause that to happen. So I am going to cover this in more depth, God help us all, in the video, the channel changes video. I'm going to try to give more concrete updates about my situation with PR. I'm going to like look back at that video and be like, here's what's still the same as what I said there and here's what has changed. I'm going to also talk a little bit about my feelings about sponsorships and stuff now that I've done some and you know, all of that. I'm going to cover it in depth hopefully this month. Um, but I just felt like in case it takes a while for me to get around to that, I did want to touch on it briefly in this check-in because it's even since my last check-in that I've been like, okay, like this is now 
a thing that's happening. It's taken almost the whole year since I started accepting PR, which was this year. During my no buy year, I'll remind you in case you've forgotten, I rejected all PR offers and they did start coming in about halfway through the year. But I said no to everything. I didn't receive a single thing in PR until starting in January of this year, but it didn't really start happening until a little bit further into the year. But it's just been in this past really month that I feel like the connections have sort of all solidified such that I'm like, oh, okay, like now, okay, this is weird and crazy. And like, I need to think about what my project's going to be like next year, because I think I might need to shift. I, I do need to actually keep mediating my spending. Like I can't just aban abandon my budget because I'm not far enough along, I think, to do that. I don't know if I fully trust myself to abandon my budget, but I might need to shift my attention a little bit to the question of stuff, <laughs> the volume of stuff. So it's just something I've been thinking about a lot and I wanted to bring it up. I don't have any answers right now. Classic Hannah. Like I don't, I'm not like, I, I've been thinking about this and I have the answers. In, in terms of stuff, I just have like information about the fact that the PR is like, it's, it's affecting my way of feeling about stuff and my way of relating to stuff and my, my like chemicals. It's affecting like the chemicals of my brain and body in a way that I used to have to spend money to have those chemicals affected. And I just feel like that's worth bringing up. And then the last two things I have on my list, I'll try to wrap it up really quickly, is that um, I'm so, I'm working so hard on my writing stuff right now. I have so much work and I don't tend to like talk about this in my daily videos because it actually helps me to keep it a little bit separate in my mind. But I've been sending a lot of work out for consideration for publication. I've been doing a lot of rewriting work on my nonfiction projects, my essay projects. I just have like a swell of writing work going on right now. And I've been spending a lot of time on that. And some of it has deadlines. Like there are book prizes for um, poetry manuscripts that are all open for a couple of months in the fall and they all close at like the beginning of November. So I've had to like scramble to get my book manuscript, my poetry book manuscript submitted to all of those prizes, which is something I'm doing for a couple of years. Like I, I have this manuscript and I just submit it to the top five or six prizes every year because that, you know, that would be like the best fate for it would be to do well in one of those prizes. But it's something they have to do every fall and it takes a lot of time. It also kind of takes a lot of money because they the prizes are expensive to enter. So it's just been like, that's just been one, that's one example, but it's like that times five. There's just a lot going on in terms of like me trying to get my work out there and trying to get my work together right now. So that has meant that I've actually had to slow down a little bit on YouTube this month. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have fulfilled my own promise to myself that I would kind of keep it fluid enough that I could scale back if I needed to. And there have been some months, some weeks, like I guess it was sort of October. No, that was this month. It was sort of September when I like went full steam ahead and there were, were videos like five, sometimes six a week for most weeks of that month. And I was just feeling amazing about it. I'm still really inspired to film. I'm still really enjoying it. But there have been some like Saturdays this month on which I couldn't post and some Tuesdays in which I couldn't post, even though those had been like my extra days, I'm having to keep a lot of balls in the air and I'm having to prioritize kind of like down to the last minute what I work on. So I appreciate you guys still being here and understanding that there's a lot going on behind the scenes for me, some of which I can't tell you about yet, but I will be telling you about, I hope, in the future. And some of which is like eating up a lot of my emotional and mental energy and literally just my time and my physical energy, like my work energy. And so it, that's why my channel has been a little bit of an ebb and flow situation when you look at like how frequently I'm able to post, but I'm still sticking to Sunday and Wednesday as absolutes and pretty much always Friday as well. I feel like that's it. I didn't mean to talk so much about PR in this video, although weirdly it has kind of been like a big thing that's happened this month. I've just gotten connected to like 
again, mostly small, cool, small brands that I had never really heard of, but then I like see what they're about. And so upcoming, I'm, I'm excited to talk about some stuff. Like I have a dress I want to show you that's really cool and a blouse that I want to show you that's really cool and a vegan leather backpack that I'm currently testing out for review. It's like, it's like stuff like that, like stuff that's cool. And I'm excited to be able to give like super thorough, honest reviews. So I'll be doing a video soon. That's the stuff, new stuff that has impressed me. And some of those things will be in there and some of it I'll just be wearing on camera. Um, and I hope that you guys can be on board for that being like a really exciting aspect of my life right now and hopefully a, an exciting aspect of my channel. And the way that I like to think about it, the confusion, the mess of trying to figure out how to deal with my feelings about the volume of stuff, that's also an exciting aspect of my channel. It's messy. It's not as clear cut as the no by year where it was just like all or nothing and the answer was nothing, right? And it's, neither is it as clear cut as a budget where I'm like, this is it, only these things and only this amount of money. It's messy and that's hard. It's hard for the public. Messiness is hard for the public. Not everyone likes to dwell in the gray area like I do, but I, I appreciate to no end, those of you who do appreciate the mess and and the spectacle of me wading through the mess and talking about it, being completely and sometimes gut-wrenchingly honest about it, trying to articulate it, trying to explain it and then re-explain it. And when I say it, what I'm just talking about is how confusing it is that it's not good and it doesn't feel good to fill up my life with stuff, whether I'm buying it or being given it from brands for review, to fill up my life with stuff as a way of distracting myself from what's hard. That's what my old habit was and that's not good. But the love of the stuff is pure and comes from a good place. It comes from a place of being a, a lover of beautiful things and someone who appreciates what's beautiful and good in life, loving oneself by accepting that it's okay to have beautiful things and celebrating oneself by wearing beautiful things. A lot of that is really, really good and healthy. And then there's a side of the attraction to beautiful things that has historically been unhealthy. So as I move forward into this new weird life where I've got control over my finances, but I have an unexpected influx of beautiful things and, and a very unusual reason for receiving them, I, the battle continues in a way that it wouldn't have if I had never been on YouTube. If I hadn't ever been on YouTube, the battle would, my life would kind of go on kind of calmly, right? I would be acquiring fewer and nicer things with my own money. And there would be this kind of clean asceticism and clarity to my disengagement from those shopping behaviors. But because I'm now working on this platform and because I'm open to receiving things to review, because sometimes, not just sometimes, but many times, there's so many wonderful, spectacularly wonderful bits of fallout from that. Either being able to talk about a brand like Serpent and Swan, or being able to give away things to people who need them or to my friends. The whole spectrum is wonderful. So I'm not about to turn around and, and say no to everything, but it just means that inside of myself, the battle continues between what's good about beautiful things in my life and what's potentially dangerous about beautiful things in my life. So I'm here for it. I'm all about it. And I hope that you guys are too. And I feel like that is the main thing that I wanted to get across in this weird, sicky, little little birdie that just hatched face with a red lip on check-in. I'm starting to talk nonsense, so I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below what you think, if any of this makes any sense at all. I think I did get through my whole list. And um, yeah, I'm going to rest a little bit and do some editing and hopefully get some videos stacked up for the weekend. Um, and then I'll start filming next week's videos, I think, when I get back from my, my trip with my girlfriends, which will be on Sunday evening. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being there.
like really, really thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, and don't forget to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.